Welcome back to my channel. I have spent the majority of this past week and then many, many months before that working on an extreme major apartment makeover for my nieces. So if you guys have been watching me for a while, the very first room makeover that I ever put up on my channel was a makeover for them. I didn't even know if I wanted to do room makeovers on my channel or it was it was very early on in my YouTube journey, so I didn't even know. They moved back in January. I spent the majority of my time this past week and then months and months of planning, working on two bedroom makeovers two closet organizations and a bathroom makeover so it's a three-part series so you'll be getting those videos on the 12th and then the following Sunday and then the Sunday after that so if you're not already subscribed with the bell notification turned on go ahead and do that now so you get updated exactly when I post the new series I can't wait for you guys to see it also I filmed a vlog all that goes into the behind the scenes of prepping and doing the room makeovers and the mess that I make in the process so that vlog is going to be up on my vlog channel tomorrow when you're watching this. So definitely check out the vlog channel. I post behind the scenes of all of my DIY projects and then just more about my life. So for today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys my favorite all-time must-have DIY materials and supplies and also doing one DIY project. We're gonna be making a really inexpensive, easy to build stool. So let me show you the room. Welcome to the DIY studio. So this is actually a DIY studio, guest bedroom, and office. And I do have the room makeover. It was in much need of a makeover at the end of last year around Christmas time. So the clips that you just saw, this room does not stay immaculate and organized. I just don't know how it ever would. Every week I'm doing a different project. I'm working on stuff. I'm planning for room makeovers. So over here I have some of the DIY projects that I've done recently on my channel. This is kind of where stuff I've made goes when they're waiting for homes and room makeover videos or stuff like that. And then all of this yarn that I picked up throughout thrift store adventures. There's also yarn I think in here, yeah. And you guys let me know on my thrifting video when I found these that a dollar for this roving was actually really good. But all of my yarn really goes down there and I've definitely deplenished my stash over quarantine. So I wanna organize all of that yarn into there. And then in this closet is where I really keep the majority of my art supplies in here. And then also in this Ikea rolling cabinet, I also keep lots of my supplies. So I'll kind of go through and show you guys what's in all of these cabinets, like in this closet and then throughout the room. And as I go through, I'll share with you like what is my must-have pieces up here is a little bit of Random things in here is like a hand saw and some wire things that I don't really use that often I just keep in this bin because I don't really need to access it And then up here is some of my sewing supplies Some thread that I have back here and then some spray adhesives And then I picked up these dowels, which I actually do kind of use a lot I got these from the thrift store for like a $1.99, which is crazy. Okay, here we go. First thing that I think I would never be able to live without. This is my favorite macrame. I'll link all of my supplies below so that you guys can check them out. I only use four millimeter macrame. I feel like it's the perfect size. Three is a little too small, three millimeter, and five is a little too thick. I really like four millimeter. I've made so many really beautiful macrame projects, so definitely a must have. One unopened spool of it here, and then I also also have a spool that I keep out here just for like quick cutoffs. And then here is just like more random stuff. Like I have like a glass spray bottle for some projects. Some of my camera equipment that I use all the time here and the camera that I'm using right now will also sit here when I'm not filming anything. Extra pieces of cane, some note cards if I ever wanna send nice notes with like my Etsy orders. And then we get into paints and brushes. So these are some of my larger stem. They have larger handles, brushes, and then I keep some of my smaller ones out here super accessible so I can just come in, grab a quick paintbrush if I'm working on something. A lot of you guys ask if I have favorite types of brushes, like either a specific brand that I like or a specific like type. I really don't. If you pay for a quality brush, you can definitely tell the difference. It's not gonna shed. I have a mix of all of them. I buy really expensive brushes, but I also buy packs of brushes when I see them at like TJ Maxx. But I will link some of the ones um, that I do use below for you guys. And then in here, 
This is my larger acrylic paints. So the ones that are in larger bottles, I keep in here. Pretty foundational colors that I use all the time. So black, white, neutrals. I use this Titan Buff color a lot in the back of paintings. And then we move into more fun colors. So the both of these drawers are all acrylic paint. And then also in the back of this drawer is more acrylic paint. And then also my watercolors are back here too. So this is all paint. Acrylic paint is a great thing to have on hand. And these are all super inexpensive. I think this is the lower tier line. I think this is the cheapest, which is around 79 cents. And just on this shelf, I just kind of organize all of my art markers, pens, office supplies, pencils are back here, random stuff like twinkle lights, paper here that I can draw on, gift wrapping. I have like ribbon, note cards in the back. This is all of my oil paints. I don't oil paint often. I have them sealed up just so that they don't leak or anything. I don't paint with oils. My mom paints with oils a lot. You know, you never know. And then random ugly Christmas sweater supplies that I have that I don't really get into. Here, okay, here is the next must have a hot glue gun. This hot glue gun and me have been through a lot together. I love this hot glue gun. I love the color of it. I've had other hot glue guns break on me. Tons of times, but I definitely recommend this one. I'll link it down below for you. It's from Amazon. The other stuff actually in these true drawers is pretty random. Sometimes I just have random supplies like gloves, some hot glue finger guards because I kept burning myself. So my mom got me some finger guards, some nylon yarn, some little hangers. So anything kind of random I know is gonna be in this drawer. Oh, this is like a leather punch hole maker. Here I have pastels, stickers, and it, like bath bomb making stuff. I made gifts for the holidays last year and they were all like bath bomb, pretty bath bomb stuff. More art books, different mediums like drawing and canvas paper. And then up here, I also have some watercolor paper. I think this is watercolor too. I actually found some of these at the thrift store, super cheap. And then sneaky back here are my big art canvas boards. So this is like mixed media that I like to do my acrylics on. And then I also have a big watercolor and then just some foam boards and some more canvases that I just kind of tuck behind the couch. And then you can't even see them. I have rulers that always come in handy. I would highly suggest rulers. This one comes in so handy. This one comes in handy when I'm woodworking. This one comes in handy when I'm just trying to cut straight lines that make a square or something like that. So definitely recommend an L ruler of some kind. I love a clear ruler because you can see through it. You can see a line that you've already drawn and then you can match that up and make a straight line. Again, this is great for when you need to cut strips of fabric, if you're just making lines for painting or stuff. I find that I use these two rulers more than I would use just a solid straight ruler. And then of course my sewing machine. I've had this since I went to fit them and it has lasted me for years. I love it. It's an Elna 3230. And then I have some pegboards that have more of my like accessible stuff. Like I have some glue up here, which Mod Podge is a great glue to have on hand. You can do tons of different projects with this or seal. Some Fabri-Tac, if you don't have a sewing machine, this is a great alternative to hemming stuff, gluing trims and stuff to throw pillows. This is another really handy tool that comes in handy all the time, which are wire cutters. These are for jewelry. You could also get some larger ones. This is another must have for any DIY studio. This paper is actually from Ikea. It comes on a big roll like this. I haven't used very much off of this. Believe it's almost 100 feet. It's actually in the kids section at Ikea. I use this for so many things. I use it to make notes on. I use it to like test out paint. I use it as a kind of like a drop cloth spray paint on to cover a surface that I don't want to get damaged when I'm working on projects and you're doing bigger projects like painting or spray painting outside. I highly recommend just a drop cloth. Me and this drop cloth have been through a lot together. The more messed up it gets, the, the more I like it. They are not the cheapest 
things in the world, but they last you forever. And it's so much better than just buying the plastic drop cloths. This is actually a project that I'm gonna be doing soon. I'm gonna be kind of organizing my pantry, making my own pantry, cause we don't have one. I got some of those from Ikea so that I could organize all of our dry goods. Even though I have all of that storage in that small closet, I still needed more organization. It just like wasn't enough. So this cabinet is from Ikea too, and it comes in several different colors and it's on rollers. The drawers are quite shallow. A great way to organize this is when I go to the thrift store, I look for utensil holders, you know, for your kitchen, for forks and spoons and stuff. They fit perfectly instead of spending a fortune on organization stuff. So in the top drawer, I have all of my glue and tape. And of course, all of this I feel like is essential because I'm always needing a different type of glue. So by far and away, I would say the most important thing in here is a Gorilla hot glue sticks. And these actually aren't even really the ones that I'm talking about. It's these, which I don't have the bag for anymore, but I'll put it up on the screen. The Gorilla hot glue sticks are five times as strong as any other hot glue. I try and get away from using something strong, like an industrial strength glue like E6000, because I don't have the patience. Hot glue dries really fast, so definitely recommend the Gorilla Hot Glue, which I'll link below for you guys. Next, this is all office supplies. And why do I have staplers? I don't even print anything. I don't even know. I have so many staples, but why do I need those? I don't, but this is all just random stuff. This drawer is a little bit random too. Got some leftover macrame from some projects. I've got some beads just because they were like too big to fit in the other drawer. I've got some pipe cleaners, some extra yarn, and then washi tape and stickers. So this is kind of a little random. None of this is really all that essential. This drawer, I've got all of my wire and jewelry making supplies, like some gold chains, some embellishments really. This is really all embellishments. I've got some extra copper pieces because sometimes I find that they make really pretty embellishments on wall hangings, so I keep them around. I've got some pom-poms, some wooden beads, some styrofoam balls, some mirrors. I do think that wire comes in handy. So this is just silver floral wire. This is copper floral wire, just so that I have it on hand. Um, it comes in handy when putting things together. Ooh, when putting things together. This is more like jewelry wire. Next drawer, this is another random drawer, but you can see it. utensil holders come in so handy. This is one of my new favorite tools, which is a punch needle tool. I love making punch needle pillows. I'm making even more of those, so. And then this is just really all hemp cord, some more like jute cord. And this bottom drawer is all like gift wrapping stuff. So I've got some really pretty tissue paper that I really like. I love this color. This is kind of random, but I love this color. These are some gift bags. These we actually got in the Philippines and I just thought they were so pretty. And then on this side of the room, I also have another pegboard. This so essential. These are my favorite scissors by far, these gold handled scissors. But me and these scissors got in a little argument over the weekend and I, and it's totally my fault, I totally sliced my finger pretty bad, but they are very sharp, but which makes them really good, fabric scissors. So highly recommend these, but be careful and don't slice your finger like I did. These always come in super helpful and they're super inexpensive. I just have some yarn here and at the bottom, I'm gonna be organizing all of that yarn down here too. Yarn is something I always like to have in the house especially while we were home. I've done so many yarn projects. Keep your eyes peeled at thrift stores. I got all of these skeins. Skeins. You know how many times I've looked up skeins? Skein? My brain will not remember how to say it. Skein. Skein. I got a whole bunch of yarn for a dollar a piece, which is a total steal. And then if you guys have been watching my videos recently, you know that I've been getting into more woodworking and I really started to safely explore like which types of tools I could actually use. It opened up all of these possibilities of projects that I could actually do. So recently I've made my patio furniture, I made my vanity, and we're about to make a stool. And all you really need to do any of these projects, a circular saw, a drill, and a measure tape. You could do so many things with a circular saw, a drill, and a measuring tape. So I'm going to change and then we are going to make a really inexpensive, super easy stool. Okay, so for our stool DIY, I feel like stools could actually get pretty expensive and sometimes you need a specific measured stool, like a specific 
size stool. My friend Jerrica is actually working from home right now because of the quarantine and she has kind of a makeshift temporary desk situation and there's not a lot of space between the desk and the bed where they're working and they're trying to make it all work. So she's been looking for a stool that was 20 inches high to completely slide under the desk. And then after we are not quarantined anymore and she's not working from home, a stool that she can use in a different part of her house. And I realize this isn't the greatest back support or desk support situation, but it's what she wants and it was her birthday and why not give her what she wants? I actually watched a tutorial online from The Rehab Life and they did a stool for 20 bucks, under 20 bucks. So I used their tutorial, change it to be the specific measurements that she needed for her little desk area. So let's get started with this stool DIY. So I always like to start by having my measurements very handy. So the measurements that I'm going for are 24 inches wide, 20 inches tall, and 16 inches deep. So the supplies that we're gonna need for this stool are one one by eight by four foot long and three two by threes at eight foot long. First, I'm gonna start off by measuring and cutting all of the wood pieces that I need, and then I'm gonna give it all a good sand. I like to do this before I assemble anything just to get all of the splinter edges away and make it all nice and smooth. Here are all of the cuts that you're gonna need to make on both the two by threes and the one by eight so that we can start to assemble the stool. Next, you're gonna take two of your 11 and a halfs and two of your 21 inch pieces and put them together like a box with the shorter sides exposed on the outside. You're gonna need two and a half inch wood screws and I have these deck screws left over from my patio chair so I just decided to use these that I had. Next, you're gonna assemble this little box that we've created by drilling two pilot holes into the smaller piece of wood and then screwing it together. Then you're gonna do this twice. So you're gonna have two boxes, which is gonna create the frame. Next, we're gonna attach our legs, which are the 19 and a quarter inch long pieces of wood. Same way, drilling pilot holes and then screwing it into the longer side of our boxes. We're gonna attach both of the boxes to these legs. So the bottom box kind of becomes the thing that you put your foot on when you have a stool. Once you have it all together, it's gonna look something like this. And then we're just gonna attach the top. You're gonna take both of your eight inch by 24 inch pieces and that's gonna become your top. I decided not to use these really, really long screws and instead just drill pilot holes and then use the one and a quarter inch wood screws that I had on hand because this topper is actually a little smaller than the other ones that we were working with. And then just give it a good sand. I wanted to try out this pickled oak stain to really see if it was gonna be something really pretty. And I actually did like it, but it was just a little too light and I ultimately resorted to my special walnut stain, which I always resort to. You could also use a pre-stain on this to make it a really smooth stained look. Totally up to you. And then I just stained the entire thing and you can go back over the top of it with a polyurethane sealer. enjoyed this video and hopefully it's gonna give you some ideas on what materials you need to have on hand to make some of the projects that I make on my channel. If you guys needed a stool in your life, you can definitely change these measurements up to fit exactly what you're looking for. And I cannot wait to share these extreme room makeovers, the bathroom, the bedrooms, the closet organizations. The first video will be up this coming Sunday. So hit that subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know exactly what also, don't forget to check out the vlog tomorrow when you're watching this for a behind the scenes. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys on Sunday. Bye guys. She missed me this week. I know you did. I know you did. You can tell me. You want to tell them that you missed me? Okay, I won't, I won't listen.